So in the interest of being efficient, I'm going to move on to introduce Faith Wandry. Uh, Faith is the Vice President for Global Supply Chain Management at American Axel and Manufacturing. Uh, American Axel is owned by the Dauk family, or not owned by, has a significant role by the Dauk family, and the Dauk family has funded the center that we work on. Um, you know, Dick Dauk star funded us uh, 30 years ago. We celebrated the 30th anniversary last year. So Faith has an extensive background in supply chain management, business systems management, et cetera. Her specialties include lean manufacturing, uh, Kanban pull systems, uh, et cetera. So we're going to have uh, Faith talk to us about supply chain ethics. Faith, I'm going to take it away. Try to keep it away from your... <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I said, a Faith Wandery. I work at American Axle. I've been there almost five years now. Um, I've been in automotive for, I'll say, 35 years now, so a long time, all in tier one, right out of college. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about American Axle first, since pe most people probably don't have a good feel for, for American Axle. So, first of all, we are, um, are we're design, we, sorry about that, we design. Um, engineer and manufacture products, right? So all the way through from the from cradle to grave, um, our, our, our just with, as with everybody's doing today, it's smart to get smarter, more efficient, and that kind of thing, so we can stay in business. And then over the next 20 years, we started in 1994, and then um, Dick Dauk actually um, acquired um, a couple um, uh, manufacturing facilities from from General Motors. And over the last um, over 20 years now, we're actually 25 this year. We um, have doubled our size in the last three years. So in 2016, we were 3.7 billion, and today we're just under 8 billion. We had um, a number of facilities here. We have over 25,000 associates now. We have one facility in Mexico that's um, over 6,000 employees. So nine plants on the same complex. It's like a little city there. And we range all the way up to um, up in the Upper Peninsula. On the, on the west side, we have a plant that's got a double digit full set of plants. So three shifts, all the people in it under 100 people, all the way ranging up to uh, over 5,000. So quite a scope and breadth um, of our, of, of our um, associates and plants. Over 700 customers, 16 engineering centers, and over 85 locations. So I apologize, I have a, a little bit of a cold. It is global, so last week on Friday, I got off of an overseas flight, and Saturday morning, I have a cold all of a sudden. So it's almost gone, but I apologize for that. Um, there's our 700, uh, most of our customers are, main, are the main automotive um, customers. So GM, Ford, Chrysler, Nissan, Toyota, um, mo most of them, but we have, we have a, a complete range up to 700 um, customers. Quality, technology, and operational excellence are our, is, is our tagline, and that's um, where we focus the most um, on every day. Our products are um, um, through the, the drive shaft, and then both the front and the rear, all the way through the axle systems um, and all the powertrain components now. Here's a, just a couple um, pictures of parts. Driveliner is our biggest division by far. That's the one I, I'm actually a player coach is what we call my, my role. I'm the vice president of supply chain globally, but I'm the player. I'm, I'm in charge of the driveline business unit supply chain, but then I coach the casting and the, and the um, metal forming. So the, the, our, our team is, I'll give you one more here. Our team is, um, it's completely global. We cross um, business units. We cross, which on the right-hand side, which are the um, metal forming and casting. And then on top, we, on the driveline, which is our biggest unit, over half the size of our company, we have um, um, a, a supply chain director in each location. And then I also have supply chain operations that are on a, because we try to standardize, standardize work, um, that kind of thing, and um, bring best practices across those, of those plants. And we have supply chain operations, systems, logistics, and global trade compliance, so customs and importing and exporting. Um, this is our breadth. I won't spend a lot of time on the chart, but just give a feel for it. Um, in automotive, it's pretty traditional that procurement um, does all the contracting of our, of our goods, and then supply chain basically takes it from that point. So we have it from the point that they say you're going to buy this part number from this supplier, then we take it all the way back. So we have it all the way from um, managing the MRP and order supplier releasing and, and determining um, what packaging it's going to be in. Um, how frequently we're going to buy it, what carriers we're going to use, bringing it into the facility with the EDI back and forth, um, and then all the way through the facility, so what types of storage we're going to have, um, how we're going to warehouse the products, if it's going to be flow or if it's going to be um, 
um, uh, whip or uh, we're going to carry whip on products and how much we're going to carry all the way through to the finished good and talking to the customer and working that through that and then shipping the product and sending our advanced shipping notifications. So the entire breadth. So advanced materials, logistics and customs, supplier management, material handling, and customer attainment. And um, we talked a little bit earlier today, I've heard a couple times consortiums. And our consortium is the Automotive Industry Action Group in the United States, and it's called ODET in, in Europe and Asia. So we have a couple of different ones that, that basically govern how we communicate with our suppliers and our customers. So we don't all have to worry about how we're going to get our requirements to the suppliers. It's all the, the frequency that you do it and what system uses it, but the, the transaction sets of how you release daily, weekly frequency, and how much you release is all done through a, um, a standardized uh, industry approach. At American Exo, we have our, 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 um, a, simp a very simple vision to power the future and provide value to our shareholders. And then we have a mission, and then we also, in each one of our functional areas, each have a, a vision and a mission that we've built off of that, that kind of govern our, our company. Um, now we finally get to the presentation, I think. So I apologize for that, but I want to make sure that you knew who we were. On the left-hand side is where it all starts. That's our cultural values. So integrity, teamwork, responsibility, excellence, lean, and empowerment. So a lot of my presentation today will be focused in that, on that side of the, because when, I, when they asked me to speak today, I thought, supply chain ethics, you know, what am I, what am I gonna say about ethics? But as I started like re doing some reading and saying, we have a, we have a lot that we, we do that we just don't, we just do it because that's what we do, okay? And not because we have a, a specific, um, um, I would say, um, project or something to say, we're gonna do supply chain ethics today. It's what we do every day, okay? So it's everyone's responsibility, um, moral, judgments, moral judgments that govern our behavior, basically. So it's in, at American Axle, it's considered everybody's role. So I'm going to go just a little bit through each one of the, um, the roles and how each one impacts supply chain ethics. Um, all, all decisions regarding the ethics um, affect our company and our culture. So first of all, human resources. So mainly, um, I'm not going to read every bullet in each slide, but I've kind of tried to highlight in each area um, where that is. But freedom of employment, um, eradication of child labor, and safe working conditions are probably the three biggest three areas that we focus on in human resource as it pertains to our um, so to supply chain ethics. Next is procurement, and that's where most of the activity is actually at. We have over 20,000 suppliers. There's about 1,700 direct material suppliers, which was product, the direct material in automotive is basically the product that actually gets into the product that we sell. And everything else is considered indirect, whether it's gloves and rags and um, lubricants or transportation um, or contracted labor services. Anything that's not going, actually physically going into the product is we consider direct. Um, so they have a lot of that. Um, measure more than just price. I think that's one of the key elements that we want to talk about today and anti-bribery and corruption. Um, that's really important, of course, in the, in the procurement side of things. And I, and I said we don't buy anything, but actually we do buy the transportation services. So my, my, the, the transportation team that we have actually does all the contracting um, in that. And then the supply chain responsibility, which is what, fall, what we fall under, is really the environmental awareness. So environmental, the carbon footprint. Um, this year we are going to develop a returnable container policy. So um, as I said before, we had, um, if, um, before 2016, there were 16 facilities at 3.7 billion. So it was very easy to be standardized at American Axle. And we were very standardized in all of our processes. And we had a lot of unwritten rules. And one of our unwritten rules are, we don't have cardboard in our factories anywhere. Bring everything in in returnables. And that's a, that was an unwritten rule by Dick Dauk. He didn't want to see it. He wanted to, he wanted to make sure we were recycling and we, were, we, weren't, we weren't putting a lot of um, um, uh, cardboard in the plant and around the plants and that kind of thing. But it's not a documented policy. And we bought, when we bought, um, when we acquired at Metaldyne, we, we acquired 75 new facilities, or actually 50 of them, 55 of them were um, our manufacturing plants. And those plants have cardboard everywhere. So this year, um, we, we had to do a lot of things over the last couple of years to get our, our two companies, um, one company, and we had to start at the bottom. So now we're getting into the things like, this year our focus is on the carbon um, for sustainability, carbon footprint, and then developing a formal returnable container program. So a policy 
because it may not make sense, and, and it doesn't make a lot of sense not to have cardboard when you're, tra when you're traveling long distances from other countries. And also, when you're do even when you're local and we take things down to Mexico, it's, it's, a, it's a long journey. It's five days there and five days back. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. We might want to start renting them and that kind of thing. So we want to put some policies together on um, what, what to try to make it simpler for the plants, since we don't have a lot of packaging engineers, so they know which ones to use, and that could help with our, our, our carbon footprint. Um, recycling, um, we also re try to reduce the greenhouse gases, um, and then issued, we have some, a bunch of savings programs that are actually done through our environmental and safety team. But environmental awareness is the key there. Also important to um, um, American Axle, with respect to this, is also the continuity of supply. It's really important that we, we keep very low inventories, and I think everybody says they keep very low inventories, but in some cases, if, a, if, a, if we have 25 trucks coming from the same supplier every day, so we don't keep a lot of inventory, we might only keep three to four, five hours of inventory. So if that truck isn't coming, it's gonna stop our production line, and in some cases at our Three Rivers facility in Michigan, if it doesn't come within two more hours, we're gonna affect the Flint, Flint um, GM Flint plant. So we keep very low inventories. So it's really important that we do our homework on the suppliers because we gotta make sure that we always have that continuity supply. So we can't have something that says, something from um, some kind of ethical issue come out that's gonna cause us to maybe stop production. So for that reason, we have a, um, American, um, our American has, a, has a, a code of business conduct. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because the business conduct is also required um, that, our, that our suppliers have to sign off saying that they, they also um, will agree to everything in our, our business conduct. So basically it's a framework, it applies to all of our associates and our agents. So any subcontractor of any kind or supplier has gotta sign off on the, on the code of business conduct. Um, and everyone is encouraged to raise concerns. That's one thing that we have some ethics lines and we have ethic lines in every single country. And not only in every country, but um, in every single language. So in China, where there's multiple languages, we have ethics lines that every, of every type of language as well, because it's really important that if people do have issues, they have a place to go. And recently, I'll say recently, because it's probably three months ago, but I got a call from our, um, um, our legal team indicating that there was an ethics line in India on a transport provider and they wanted to talk to me about it. So they scheduled the meeting the next day. By the time they got, they got a hold of me, sorry about that, by the time they got a hold of me, um, they'd already been to India, investigated it, and came back and brought me the information to start analyzing the data because they really thought there was an issue there. And in the end, there was an issue there and our associate was let go. But it was also one of those things we talked about earlier today where we're think, some things are just wrong here. It was part of doing business over there. But regardless, um, in India, they, they, it's, it, was, um, it was a situation where one of our associates were giving them information so they would win the contract. And then they would meet and they would get paid off at, this, at lunch for him giving. So we didn't, pay any more, we didn't pay any more for the transportation because it was the lowest bid, but the one guy kept getting the bids. And in here, that would be extremely forbidden, but over there, that's just part of the normal business. Our associate was let go. Um, then I had to deal with the, with, the, with the provider since it was a global provider. So, that's, so it, we take it very, very seriously and we act very, very fast. Um, we can't do that with everything, but in, in, in these kind of situations where, where ethics are involved, we act very fast. So this is our code of business contact. I'm not gonna go through that, but you can see there's a lot of, a lot of different areas um, that are covered in there, including importing and exporting, um, conflicts of interest and that kind of thing. Um, we conduct business at American Axle with integrity, and I, I kind of highlighted the areas, the essential partners are success, um, to be honest and fair, comply with all the laws and the standards. And as I said, we are the, um, we're in charge of the global customs and trade compliance, but we can't possibly know all the laws at every country that we, live, that we work in and that we sell products to or buy from. But that's what we count on our, 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 our plants for. So if we are conducting business in, a, in, a, in, a, in another country, um, somebody in that plant is assigned to understand whether, sometimes it's not a, a, a logistics person, sometimes it's a finance person, sometimes it's the, it's the president, sometimes it's a, it's, um, it could be anybody in the, in the, but somebody has the responsibility in their KPOs and in their job description to understand the law in that country. So, and so a lot of times we use, we definitely use, um, 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 we'll say like KPMG and PwC and those firms as well. We partner with them because we can't know all the laws. When you're in Mexico, there's Maquiladoras. When you're, we have a we have a foreign trade zone to GM in Thailand. 
Um, but, we, but we definitely audit those facilities. We have a, um, a compliance program that shows what our A facilities are, our B facilities, and C. And the Cs all go through a self-audit. But our Bs, then we have internal audits where our, somebody from our internal audit team, somebody from our customs team will go to that plant and make sure that they're doing everything the way they're supposed to do it through our standardized work. And then we also have our A facilities, which there's 13 of them, where we actually have somebody like PwC or ENY or um, KPMG come in. Next, we, um, these are all things that are inside our, our, like I said, inside the code of audit, but we prevent bribery. Um, our consultants, are, 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 when we hire somebody, they have to comply with AAM's, um, uh, all of our code of ethics. We avoid conflicts of interest. Um, trade compliance strategy, I talked about a little bit about that, but we have assessments inside and out. Um, and this, this I just want to get a feel for, for how much we're moving across. So we have, a, um, through all the countries, we have duty draw, drawbacks. We have a lot of different programs, Rule 8 in Mexico. We have a lot of programs that we have to, to comply with when you're, when you're definitely when you're a global company. And it's really important that everything stays above the, um, above the law. We have meetings every week um, that somebody from every plant has to, has to attend. And they're, they're short meetings, 15, 20 minutes. And in those meetings, we talk about, has anybody, like, has the tax authorities come in and given us a letter? Has, has anybody from the customs? So that way we can stay on top of and help the plants get through any time there. Because a lot of times there's just requests for information and that kind of thing. But sometimes that can get much more complicated as well. So we try to stay very close with our plants so we can make sure that we are on top of anything like that. Um, we talked about the international business regulations and keeping honest and accurate records is really important. So um, with our ERP systems, we try to make sure that we don't duplicate and, um, transactions. So if we do have a, like a Maquila door where we have to keep track of Annex 24 transactions, we, we, we duplicate them and we send them in. We don't, keep, we don't keep punched twice on any of those programs. Next um, is on the, on the health side, and, we, and to provide safe and hygienic working conditions is critical through the, through the supply chain. And we do it as right. I think we talked about that a couple times today, you know, that we can't have a procedure or a process or a policy for everything, but you gotta, you gotta know what to do to do things right all the time, and maintaining our reputation is really important. So we can't govern everything, so it's, it's, it's in our culture um, at American Axel, and everybody, I mean, you'll, it's, a, it's a different, um, it's, I've been in, five different automotive suppliers, and it really is, the integrity is number one at American Axle, both in the quality, the quality of product, you can stop the product, anybody can stop the production line. If one quality product starts to go through so that we don't have to go back and rework um, shifts and shifts of production, we can get to the root cause right away. Next, this is, a, this is on our website, and we can't possibly go out there and make sure that over 20,000 suppliers are doing what we need them to do. So we have some, we have some, just like I said before, we have an ABC policy on the customs. Almost every area we have an ABC. So on our A suppliers, we definitely have things where we actually have people, we have a SQE department, a development that we can't, when we source a production supplier source, we go right, somebody goes right to the place where they're gonna make the parts. We don't go to the, the, the office in, in Indianapolis or in Chicago, we go right to the source. Somebody from our plant, our, 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 this organization, which is in quality right now, it kind of moves between procurement and quality, but right now it's in quality. They go on site and they do a full assessment on that plan. And we have a, a lot they have to go through um, with that. But in, in, this is our supplier site, so they have to go through this doing business with AAM as our site, and they have a, and there's an anti-corruption policy, a code of business conduct, and then we also have our supplier requirements manual. And it is the first impression of American Axle, by the way. This is where they start. If you, wanna, if you want to supply to American Axle, you have to come here first. So the first thing they're gonna see if they wanna be in a club is, is this information. So we're trying to set, set, um, set them up right from the very beginning of what the expectation is. I, um, there's, we have an eight-page policy on the anti-corruption, um, and we also have them have a supplier acknowledgement where they have to send it back. Okay, so of course, we, again, that's not gonna guarantee they're not gonna do anything, but it does, it does tell us that they, it forces them to read it and understand it before they send it back, to, um, before we actually um, source them. And then our supplier, uh, supplier requirements manual, there's, I think there's nine sections in here, but 1.4 and 1.9 are the two sections that are the most important with, um, with respect to supply chain ethics, the code of business conduct and then the social responsibility. And there's multiple references throughout the document, but those are the main two areas. Um, then supply chain sustainability. Um, suppliers are encouraged to take an active role 
Um, again, I talked a little bit earlier, our consortium is the Automotive Industry Group and, and Odette over in Europe. Um, AIG does have a supply chain sustainability knowledge assessment that's out there that some of your students might be interested in to go out there and take a look at. Um, and and a we take voluntary um, actions all the way down through the tiers. So um, this is our, our carbon footprint. This is, a, this is our 2017 to 2018 comparison. This is in its infancy. Um, we have R3PL we use as CH Robinson. So they've been tracking the information the last two years, and now we're getting a monthly report. So I'm not gonna kid anybody by saying I know everything that's on that document because I don't yet. But um, the main areas that we focus in on right now are we went from truck to rail and dropped 5,400 shipments, and it, it drastically increased the environmental impact on the trees off on the, on the lower right-hand side of the, of the chart. So as, as you do things and move things, you can, you can predict what's gonna happen, and then every month we get the document and we kind of validate that that's happening. The one thing we haven't been able to figure out yet in this document is how do we track when we fill up trucks better? So when trucks are, because that's not part of what they see, they only see trucks moving, not how full the trucks are. So that's one of the things we're gonna be trying to tackle this year. But that's our carbon footprint, and that's what we're just starting to, this is, there's two things, like I said earlier today, that the, in 2019 is our focus, and carbon footprint, and try, then trying to convert what this is saying, and show our shareholders what we're doing, and how we're impacting the environment is number, is number one, and then the returnable container policy is number two. Last I wanted, I think it's the last slide, or close to the last slide. Um, we also, for not every one of our suppliers, we talked a little bit about how do you know what they're doing. Um, so any supplier that starts to have any um, issue with deliveries, either on, or quality, we, have a, um, we, we happen to use a third party intelligence software. This is KPMG's, we've used a couple other ones before, but basically all the information in the wheel there are all the different kinds of areas, and sustainability is in this document. It's basically the vulnerability scorecard of the supplier. A lot of financial information in there, but you can go to a couple different sections in there and find out if they've had any issues with um, water or um, ground, groundwater or anything like that. Any kind of ethics issues that they've had will also be in here. So again, it's not every supplier. We started out with the top 25, and then we did the top 200, and now any supplier that has any issues with delivery or quality or um, anything that we think might be of an issue that we hear on the news, that kind of thing, we, we go out and we pull this information. So we have, it's part of a consortium. That's another way you can do it. It's got a lot of certification and legal issues, sustainability, that kind of thing. And then in closing, um, um, at AM, we treat our, we treat the ethical supply chain very seriously. Even though I didn't realize it when I when when they said you want to speak on it, I, as much stuff as we have out here, like I said, we did, it's not a project. It's how we do business every day. We take proactive steps to try to avoid our reputation damage. Um, we encourage our supply chain to be transparent. Um, and, and I think Dr. Ayer mentioned it earlier, you know, we make problems visible. So when we have executives come to our, when I go to a plant, the first thing I look, I don't look to see what they did right. Um, the first slide that they all show me is where their problems are, where their problems are that they're challenged by, and where the problems are that they need my help. Okay, and then we go on to the rest of the presentation, and then, then my, my job is to make sure that if they do need help and it's serious help, that I get a team in there to help, or um, we educate, or through standardized work, or through something that we, we help them. And then we take responsibility for the environment. So we take, you know, we, we, we owe it to our associates every day to leave the same way they came in every day. So, that, that ends it. <laughs>